Hello, welcome, good evening. I am Professor Nimkar. I uh, will be taking this class uh, for you. Uh, you all are aware that this is a foundation course for uh, preparing for Olympiad, right? Anyway, Olympiad is just the name, but you should first try to focus on learning basic concepts of mathematics and practicing them. Okay? Slowly, you will get to know uh, the higher things and then you can decide. Fine. Uh, now, I hope you know the syllabus. Yes, no? Be responsive. No. no. Okay, then first of all, you should see the syllabus. It is there on the website. Okay, what topics we are covering? What are the books that we are going to use? Okay, you should know it. Right, because each and everything I cannot take in the class. I will try to take but you should know uh, the syllabus in the sense what syllabus in the sense what topics we are going to cover and then there are certain list of books that is also given at the end. So, just have this otherwise I will tell someone in the office to give that copy to you. Okay? This is first thing. Now, uh, the first chapter uh, is I just tell you the name uh, it is about arithmetic and it covers the following topics like divisibility, square and square roots, percentage, simple and compound interest, then uh, time work speed distance problems. Okay? I think you all are aware of this right? and the last is average. So, today we shall start with the first point that is divisibility and uh, GCD and LCM. Correct? Do you know what is divisibility? See, it is very simple. When do we say that an integer A divides another integer B? An integer A divides another integer B. Anyone? Come on here. Yeah. Huh? No, divisible is an alternate word. I just want the definition. Sit, sit. No, no need to stand. Huh? When the number A divides the number B, we say that number B is divisible by number A. Okay. Uh, okay, I will come to you. See, I want the concept. What you are just saying, the same thing in a different words. Okay. When do we say that A divides B or B is divisible by A or uh, B is multiple of A? Okay. I will tell you, uh, we say that if we can express B as a multiple of A, okay, we can write B equal to some integer K times A. So, K is some integer. right? So, if there exists such integer K, then we say that A divides B or B is divisible by A, okay? lot of things you can uh, translate. Clear? No need to give example. You, you yourself give me any example. This number divides this number. 5 divides 10. 5 divides 10, correct. 5 divides 10, let me put it in this language. 5 divides 10 means what? You can write 10 as 5 multiplied by 2, right? k times a. So, here k is 2. You can take any integer, positive, negative, it does not matter. One more example, this is very simple example. 2 divides 4, okay. Yeah, so slightly larger numbers. 6561 divided by 729. Wait, let me write. Come on. 6561. Huh? 6561. 6561. Divided by 729. 729. So, you mean to say that this division is complete, right? So, 729, what you want to say? 729 divides 6561. 6, Why? What is K? 9. 9. Correct? So, you all can verify 6561 is 9 multiplied by 729. So, when I say divisibility, this you keep in mind that I will say A divides B whenever you can express B in the form K times A where k is some integer. Is it okay? So, that is what is called as 
divisibility. Now, we can give lot of examples. Uh, now, we use the notation, a standard notation used for this, we just write like this, this is a straight line, do not write like this, this is a fraction okay? and read this as A divides B. So, A divides B, we indicate or we represent by writing like this. Okay. One question I forgot to ask, uh, all of you are from English medium or a Marathi medium? You are from Marathi medium, are you getting what I say? Okay. Zamte. Anyone else? Uh, see, sometimes I will explain in Marathi because this is going to be recorded. There may be some students who may not uh, get English fast, but everything I will translate it to English. Okay? And if you get into problem, you ask me, you stop and ask me. Fine? Okay. So, this is the basic concept uh, A divides uh, B. Fine? Now, there are certain properties uh, of A divides B. Uh, for example, uh, I mean if A divides B, A divides B and B divides C, okay, this implies that A divides C. Okay. A divides B, B divides C, then we can say that A divides C, very easy to prove this. Okay. You can simply use the basic definition. A divides B means you can write B as multiple of A. Now, B divides C means you can write C as a multiple of uh, B and that in turn you can write C as multiple of A. Okay? So, it is a very simple proof uh, you can write, but this is very important property uh, that A divides B, uh, B divides uh, C, then you can say that uh, B divides C. Now, there is one more pro important property that A divides B and A divides C, A divides B and A divides C, okay. then A divides x B plus y C, okay. x B plus y C, where x and y are some integer, x and y are some integers. Okay. Once again I repeat, A divides B as well as A divides C, then you can conclude that a divides this type of expression x b plus y c, where x and y are any two integers. Clear? Now, here this type of expression x b plus y c, you are considering multiple of b, multiple of c and their addition. This is always called as linear combination of B and C. This type of expression is always called as y B plus sorry x B plus y C. This type of expression is always called as linear combination of B and C. So, what does this result say? That if x divide uh, sorry A divides B, A divides C, then A divides every linear combination of uh, B and C, every linear combination of uh, B and C. Okay. For example, let me explain, come on you all write, just sitting you would not get, you have to continuously write along with me. Okay, uh, six divides sixty six, obvious. Six divides fifty four. Now I have taken one linear combination two multiplied by sixty six uh, plus minus 3 multiplied by 54. Come on, calculate this fast. Is, is this of the type x multiplied by 66 plus y multiplied by 54? Okay? I am writing expression like that. So, this is a linear combination of 66 and 
54. This is the term we use linear combination. Now, why we say so, etc., that let us not go into details right now. Negative 30. Hmm? Uh, that's also. Okay. Uh, negative 30. Minus 30. Negative 30. Yeah. Negative 30 or minus 30. You all are getting? Not writing? Hmm. Okay, good. So, obviously, divisible by 6, yeah. correct? So, this is just the illustration what we have learned. Come on, someone of you tell me one more linear combination. So, I want to write x multiplied by 66 plus y multiplied by 54. Come on, you take any value of x and y simple value so you can calculate fast otherwise you can take any x any y tell me x and y 7 and 50 7 and uh, still and small okay. huh. 7 multiplied by 66 plus, huh? negative, 4 plus negative 4 into 54 come on you calculate and tell me Calculate and tell me the answer. Two hundred and two four six. Just check correct or not. This is minus 216, right? Yep. This is uh, 460. Four, right. Now, 246 is it divisible by 6? Yeah. 6 4 is 24 yep. and the 6, right? So, this is just the illustration once again that if uh, A divides B, A divides C. We are going to use this uh, later, so I'm that's why I'm repeating. A divides B, A divides C, then A divides each of its linear combination. What is the meaning of linear combination? A number. First of all, the expression of the type x b plus y c, where x and y are any integers, any integers, positive, negative, doesn't matter. Okay, we always think positive integers, right? But not necessary then a number obtained by uh, this uh, formula is called a linear combination. Okay? Fine, any doubt? Fine, uh, now this is divisibility. Now, when, when A divides B, as I told you, we say that A is a factor of B, A is a divisor of B, right. So, I will be using these terms factor or divisor and B is called as multiple of A. Okay? Now, given any number, if it has only the divisors 1 and that number itself, I am talking about positive at the moment, let us not uh, consider a negative. Okay? then that number is called as a uh, prime. Okay? So, what is the definition of prime number? That a positive integer, positive integer p such that p not equal to 1. So, we consider all positive integers other than 1. Okay? It is called <laughs> prime if it is only divisors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus p. Or we can say, I mean there is an alternate version also but it is equivalent, it is not different. 
that p is a positive integer not equal to 1, only positive divisors are 1 and p. Okay. See, uh, when we consider divisibility, just partition, when we consider divisibility, most of the time we talk for positive integers. Why? Because uh, for here, for example, uh, as somebody said, 4 divides, let us say 12, 4 divides 12, okay. then we can say that 4 divides minus 12 also, alternately minus 4 divides 12 or minus 4 divides minus 12. Are you with me? Are you getting what I say? Okay. So, that is why when I say 4 is a divisor of 12, automatically minus 4 is also divisor of 12. In general, in general, when A is divisor of B, A is divisor of B, in that case minus A is also divisor of B. Okay. That is why most of the time we may consider only positive integers, it does not mean that it is not applicable for negative integers. I hope you are getting what I said. Okay. So, come back to this, uh, <coughs> a positive integer p not equal to 1 is called prime if its only positive divisors are 1 and p or if I want to just say only divisors are then I have to say plus or minus 1 and plus or minus p okay. and a number positive no integer other than prime is called as composite. Okay. So, prime integers, composite integers. Uh, can you list at least first 10 primes? Come on. First 10 primes. So, 2, 3, come on, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, how many are these? 3, 6, ha, 19, 23, 20, 27, 29, how many are these? Yeah, okay. You can write 5 more as a homework, okay? 5 more integers, 5 more prime integers as a homework, right? Uh, now, what I said composite, composite means what? Positive integers that are not prime are composite. That means, other than plus 1 and that number itself, it has at least one more divisor. Yeah, but that is what I said, na? the number which is not a prime is composite, correct, other than 1. What, what does it mean? That it has, uh, I mean apart from or besides that number and 1, it has at least one other divisor. Okay? So, that is the definition of uh, composite number. Now, whenever uh, the factor is prime, we call it as a prime factor of the number. Okay, prime factor of the number and we shall see that every number you can write as a product of primes. This is a very basic result in uh, arithmetic, every integer you can write as a product of primes. Okay. Let us take example, very simple example at the beginning, uh, 66, okay. very easy 6 into 11. 6 you can write as 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 11, right. So, I have expressed 66 as a product of primes uh, 2 into 3 into 11, correct. This is called as prime factorization, this is called as prime factorization and it is very, uh, I mean it is a very important property that a first of all every integer can be expressed as a prime factorization. 
that is one thing and it is unique. Unique in what sense? Only it may change in the order, but otherwise it is unique in the sense if I write the same product as L A 1 into 2 into 3. Okay? I would not consider this as a different uh, uh, expression, it is same only the order is changed. So, as far as order is concerned the prime factorization is unique. Fine. So, this is again another important uh, uh, basic result uh, you will get. So, whenever you have given any integer it is important to find its prime factorization. Now, before we shall see examples uh, let me tell you about the divisibility test. Basic divisibility test uh, uh, I, I, I mean uh, I cannot give for all the numbers. Okay? So, first of all divisibility test okay uh, divisibility by 2 so given integer how will you recognize that now when i say integer it is positive negative any in this case okay when it is divisible by 2 No, uh, that is uh, altogether different. It is even number, that is the definition of even number, it is divisible by 2. But how will you recognize that? Sir, um, so, uh, before I tell my answer, I have one question. On this basis, do we know what is an even number or do we have to define an even number? No, no, uh, same thing is said. Uh, it is an even number. Even number is defined as the number which is divisible by 2. I, I want given an integer how will you recognize see divisible by 2 means what you will simply divide that number by 2 and if you get remainder 0 it is divisible correct <coughs> if remainder is 0 it is divisible I do not want that is there any other way when the number ends in 2 4 6 8 or 0 that is right correct whenever the number or integer ends with one of the integers 2 come on 4 6 8 and 0. So, if last integer or last digit you can say not integer I am sorry uh, the last digit if it is one of this is it it is divisible by Okay. You can write plenty of example. For example, 5, 3, 8 okay. divisible by 2 because last digit is 8 and so on. Right? Now, next is uh, divisibility by 3. When do you say that given integer is divisible by 3? Once again, repeat. Understand? How will you uh, know that a given integer is divisible by three? Simply add all digits. Take the sum of all digits, and if that sum is divisible by three, the number is divisible by three. Okay? I'll <coughs> write. Uh, uh, it is uh, shooted, so I have to write properly. So, uh, an integer <laughs> is divisible by 3 if sum of all its digits is 
divisible by 3 very simple test okay you just see the uh, multiplication table of 3 3 3 tens are 30 okay what is 3 into 11 33 some of the digits divisible by 3 then 12 3 is 36 right some of the digits divisible by 3 I, I give you slightly uh, bigger example 735 <coughs> is divisible by 3 yes no some of the digits is what 15 divisible by 3 or 2103 2103 is divisible by 3 why some of the digits 2 plus 1 plus 0 plus 3 6 6 is divisible by 3 correct so that is the uh, divisibility test for 3 similar is for 9 divisibility by 9 same an integer is divisible by 9 if sum of its digits is also divisible by 9. Again see all the numbers in the table of 9. Okay, you will get this. Bigger examples 5, 4, 9 okay, is divisible by 9. 5, 4, 9 divisible by 9. What is some of the digits? 18. 18. 5 plus 4 plus 9, 18 divisible by 9. Correct? Or 2088 2088 divisible by 9. What is some of the digits? 18. 18, 2 plus 0 plus 8 plus 8, 18 divisible by 9. Okay? You can write, uh, uh, again I repeat one thing, I can just take negative numbers, minus 549 is it divisible by 9, you just check 549 is divisible by 9 or not. Okay? So, that plus and minus, uh, I am just telling once again. Okay? Now, next test is divisibility by 8 uh, prior to that yeah uh, what is divisibility of 4 divisibility by 4 Sit, sit, uh, do not uh, stand up, okay. You be relaxed. Huh. Last two digits, uh, if they are divisible by 4, then it is, uh, uh, it is divisible. Correct. Okay. When do you say any integer is divisible by 4? Just consider the last two digits. A number formed by last two digits, okay, tens place and units place. If that number is divisible by 4, the given number is divisible by 4, okay. So, an integer <coughs> is divisible by 4 if the number formed by last two digits is divisible by 4 number formed by last two digits is divisible by 4. Okay. For example, again you can check uh, all the integers in the multiplication table for 4. Okay. 
but I take slightly bigger example uh, 4 divides 2092 okay last two digits 92. 92 divisible by 4 yes right why 4 into 23 right or uh, you can consider 4 divides 4 72 right because last two digits are divisible by 4 right. So, very simple divisibility test by 4 and similar you have for 8 similar you have for 8. <coughs> So, an integer is divisible by 8, okay, if 3 digit number formed by last 3 digits is divisible by 8 okay so you are just trying to simplify the problem <coughs> suppose you suppose you are having four digit number five digit number or uh, seven digit number and if you want to check is it divisible by 8 or not okay always basic method is there you divide find the remainder if the remainder is zero it is divisible but we are trying to find out simple test <coughs> so, you just uh, consider 3 digit number formed by the last 3 digits that means the digit at the 100th place, digit at the 10th place and the unit place correct and if it is divisible by 8 then the given number is divisible by 8 fine. Uh, for example, for example 8 divides 1024 because last three digits are 0 to 4 divisible by 8 yes right or 8 divides 204368 yes last three digits 368 is it divisible by 8 yes you can check very easily 36 8 so huh. no, uh, so perfect perfect but that is only for uh, powers of 2 3, 6, uh, not divisible by 8. Check. It is. 8, 4, 32, 4 and 8. 46. Right? Sorry, 48. Agree? Fine. So, that is divisibility by 8. Now, divisibility by of 6 is a uh, very simple divisibility by 6 an integer is divisible by 6 if it is divisible by 2 as well as by 3 okay so we factor out the 6 we, we factor out 
factor it and then you get 203. We factor it means? Like you, you find out the prime factorization of 6. No, no, see. And then you get it, right, 203. The point is that we are just checking this divisibility test for prime factorization only. Otherwise, you have to check is it divisible by 2, is it divisible by 3, is it divisible by 5 and so on. right? Instead of that, if you know it is not divisible by 3, there is no need to divide by 3. Correct? That is why these divisibility tests are uh, uh, important. Are you getting what I say? So, if it is divisible by both 2 and 3, then you can say it is divisible by 6. Now, both the tests are very simple. So, you can apply. Right? Next is divisibility by uh, divisibility by 5 again very simple. I will not write on the board. If the last digit is either 5 or 0, it is divisible by 5. Okay? Once again I repeat that an integer is divisible by 5 if the last digit is either 0 or 5. Okay? Now, similarly divisibility by 12. <coughs> divisibility by an integer is divisible by 12 if it is divisible by both 3 and 4 obvious reasons an integer is divisible by 12 if it is divisible by both 3 and 4 Correct. Now, one more I would like to give that is divisibility by 11. This is slightly, slightly complicated, not too difficult. So, an integer <coughs> is divisible by 11. Okay. So, for that what we do is this, I am sorry. So, consider the sum of digits at even place and sum of digits at odd place. If the difference between these two sums is divisible by 11, then the given integer is divisible by 11. So, how will you find that given integer is divisible by 11? That you consider two sums, one sum of the digits at the even place and sum of the digits at the odd place and then take the difference between these two sums. Now, if this difference is divisible by 11, then the given number is uh, divisible by 11. Agree? Understand? Okay? Uh, I just explained with the example, uh, you consider the number 6303. 6303. Now, digits at even place is this, right? The sum is 3 plus 3, 0. Then the digits at the odd place is uh, 6 plus 0, it is 6, I am sorry, 3 plus 3 is 6, okay? And the difference between the two is 0, correct? Difference between these two sums 
is 0 and 0 is always divisible by n integer right. So, here in particular this is divisible by 11 correct. Now, come on quickly divide 6303 by 11 and verify it is simple divide 6303 by 11 and find the division. 573 you are computed ok good 573 correct one more example I will take one zero nine seven three six one zero nine seven three six is this divisible by eleven that is the question is this divisible by eleven ok now even place six seven zero right so what is the sum of the digits at even place it is zero plus seven plus six that is thirteen right and sum of the digits at odd place. So, it is 3 plus 9 plus 1 or I will write 1 plus 9 plus 3 it is also 13 correct. Now, what is the difference? Difference between these two sums is 0 divisible by 11 and therefore, this integer is also divisible by 11. understood homework you divide this number by 11 and find the division or find the answer ok this is homework do not do here divide so this is just the verification you divide this number by 11 and you find it ok now, why I have explained this divisibility test because I was telling you about the prime factorization. Every integer you can express as a product of primes and that expression is unique as far as only the order is concerned. So, how to find out prime factorization? You just check is it divisible by 2, just consider the primes one by one ok and try to factorize. So, firstly let me illustrate and you are going to do it 7440, 7440, we want to find prime factorization. Obviously, it is divisible by 2, last is 0, right? Is it divisible by 4? Last two digits? Yes, no? Correct? So, it is divisible by 4. So, you, you divide it by 4 and find the remaining factor. Come on. <coughs> divide it by 4 and find the remaining factor. What is the answer? No, no, let us go one by one, right? Because we have to do it systematically. <coughs> you last two, you are not uh, taking part. Are you doing? Are you with us? Yes. Come on, tell me 4 multiply, divide this number by 4. What is it? 1860. All of you got it? Again, we know that this is divisible by 4, yes, yes no, yes. correct. So, I write this as 4 multiplied by 4, tell me 465, 4, 6, 
फाइव नाउ इट इज नॉट डिविजिबल बाय फोर राइट इट इज डिविजिबल बाय फाइव सो फोर आई मीन दिस मल्टीप्लाइड बाय फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाय नाइंटी थ्री It is divisible by three. Yeah. So this is four multiplied by four multiplied by five multiplied by three multiplied by thirty-one. Thirty-one prime. Yes. Yes. Now uh, we want prime factorization, right? So this four I will write as two into two. Again, se second four is two into two. Multiplied by five, multiplied by three, multiplied by thirty-one. Correct. This is the prime factorization. Are you with me? Now, you may get in a different order. It all depends. I am dividing first by four, then by five, whatever. But finally, this you should get this expression. Only your order of the uh, order of the primes may be different. Clear? so this is called as prime factorization expressing the integer as a product of primes is called as prime factorization and for obtaining prime factorization you need to uh, you apply these uh, divisibility test okay of course i am sure, i mean i am aware and you are also aware we can apply only to certain limits because there are plenty of primes beyond that you really have to uh, keep checking with every prime are you with me so suppose whatever primes we have listed i think we have listed up to 31 none of the prime is a divisor then what then you have to keep trying there is no option okay but this is the way you can apply uh, come on quickly calculate prime factorization of 1 4 8 5 0 1 it is divisible by 2 it is divisible by 5 is it divisible by 4 no so you divide directly by 2 it is not divisible by 4 last two digits 50 not divisible by 4 so this comes out to be 2 multiplied by i have computed the answer it is 7425 is that right hmm divisible by 5 so can we do it from starting from 5 only ha huh, you can i told you it it all depends it is not necessary you start with 2 the, then these day you can do anyway so final answer i will write and i'll wait come on you do it is it divisible by 3 divisible by 9 yes so you can directly divide by 9 divide by 5 okay you can get it so finally you should get the answer as 2 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 again then multiplied by 3 3 times multiplied by 11 in fact divisibility test for 11 also you can apply and you can find out it is divisible by 11 or not okay <coughs> understand prime factorization and how to go about it yes. once again i repeat we are considering the prime factors which are smaller comparatively okay if the there are no prime factors below 31 then you really have to try okay so that problem is there now as a homework 
you find out prime factorization of uh, these two numbers 4, 9, 5, 0, 0 and second is 1, 0, 3, 9, 5. Okay, homework. Fine. So, you understand the concept of divisibility, factorization, uh, divisors, etcetera. Okay. Let us go ahead. The next important concept is uh, this is always abbreviated as GCD short form is GCD, greatest common divisor. Okay? So, let me write the definition, consider the integers A and B, not both of them zeros. Okay? A positive integer d positive integer d it's called GCD of A and B if D is common divisor of A and B. What does it mean? D divides A as well as D divides B. It is a common divisor. Okay. If C is any common divisor of <coughs> A and B, if C is any common divisor of A and B, then C divides D, then C divides D. Okay? So, given two integers A and B, not both of them are 0. Okay? Then what is GCD? Suppose D is GCD, if it satisfies these two conditions. Okay? What are the two conditions? First condition is that D divides A as well as D divides B. That means D is a common divisor of A and B. So, you understand the meaning of common divisor. right? Secondly, if C is any common divisor of A and B, that means C divides A as well as C divides B, then C divides D also. So, in this sense, it is the greatest common divisor. You list all common divisors of A and B, then D is greatest among all of them. Okay? It is also called as high, yes, are you aware another term? Highest common factor, okay? GCD or highest common factor factor. This is clear to you? Of course, this is the definition I had given. Uh, we shall see the examples, but at the moment we will take 5 minutes break.